As we continue on to look at chapter 13, uh, equilibrium, let's look at a couple basic equilibrium concepts. First of all, there's this idea that up to this point, most of the reactions we've described in chemistry, you know, like you're going to burn magnesium and make magnesium oxide, all the reactants are reacted and turn into products. Um, and so most of the things that we've looked at, we're looking at reactions that go to completion. Those are easy reactions to deal with as far as calculating the results. But most reactions uh, are reversible to some extent. And so reversible reactions we write by showing the arrow pointing both directions. And this just indicates that the reaction can go in both directions. We still call the products the things on the right and the reactants the things on the left. We call the reaction going from left to right the forward reaction and the reaction going from right to left the reverse reaction. <clears throat> uh, when setting up an equilibrium system it's not necessary, you, you would never really expect to mix the substances in the mole ratios that appear in the equation. The mole ratios at equilibrium are not equal. The thing that's at equilibrium when you make an equilibrium system is the forward and reverse reaction rates. When setting up an equilibrium systems, I think we've already looked at this slide. What will an equilibrium state look like if we add a larger amount of A than B? Well, the system will still come to equilibrium. And so, um, I'm going to just skip ahead here to this diagram. If we have this system where we have A and B that we're reacting and producing C and D, and we start out like this, with mostly A and B, a little bit of C and D, uh, after a certain amount of time, well, right here at the beginning, this the forward, rate, the forward rate, the reaction of A and B turning into C and D, is fairly fast compared to the reverse rate because there's not very much C and D that can turn into A and B. After some time, as some of the A and B has turned into C and D, after some time, the forward rate and the reverse rate will be equal. Equilibrium exists when the forward and reverse rates are the same. It's important to keep in mind that equilibrium does not mean that the concentrations of anything will be equal. It's that the forward and reverse rates are equal. So what you are going to get very used to setting up when we do equilibrium problems is something called an ice box. Now remember, the ice box is uh, a box that helps us organize some information. And the ICE is really important for you to remember that the I stands for initial concentration, the C stands for change, and the E stands for the concentrations after the system has come to equilibrium. The concentration after the forward and reverse reactions are the same. Now in this particular reaction we started with a one molar solution of A and a two molar solution of B and no C and D in the mixture. That's what we had initially. Now you'll notice that when the system came to equilibrium, when the system came to equilibrium, these were our concentrations. And somehow we were able to measure one of these. And from one of them, we could calculate all the other concentrations because, um, for example, since C has a coefficient of 1, I'm just going to call this amount X right here. Now we know that X material is going to show up, and so I'm going to put a plus X, indicating that we know the concentration, the change. Remember, C right here is for change. The concentration is going to increase for chemical C because um, there wasn't any of it to begin with. 
it has to increase. Now notice here we have an increase as well, but this time it's three times that amount. Why three times? Because look at the coefficient up there. For every molecule of C that we produce, we're going to produce three molecules of D. So you'll notice that if X is 0.275, that the amount of D at equilibrium is just going to be three times that much. You'll also notice that over here, um, this uh, concentration reduced. The concentration of B got smaller. So I'm going to call that negative X because the amount that the concentration decreased is the same amount that the concentration here went up because the coefficient is 1 in front of that. So this is, we took away 0.275 from the original concentration and ended up with this concentration in the equilibrium system. So the equilibrium concentrations are shown here in the bottom, remember. And here uh, for A, we have a coefficient of 2, so we're going to take away 2x. And so um, we took away 0.55 molarity from the original concentration and it ended up with 0 0.450. Now we're going to look at a graph of what happened here. So keep in mind this, this um, equation when you're looking at the graph. The coefficient in front of A is 2, the coefficient in front of B is 1, and we started with some A and some B. We started with 0C and 0D, and the coefficient in front of D is 3. Now, how can we tell all of that? Um, how does that relate to this graph? Well, C and D started right here with 0 concentration. Um, chemical B, which we can't hardly see, the B right here, started with 2 molar, and chemical um, A started with 1 molar. So when this reaction first started, A, the slope here, is much steeper than the slope for B. They're both reducing their concentration, but A reduces it faster because it has a coefficient of 2. Um, D, its slope climbs much more steeply because it has a coefficient of 3. Now at this point right here, something happens to our system. It comes to equilibrium. So at this time, whatever this time is, that's the time when our system comes to equilibrium. And the concentrations that you see here are the concentrations of the system at equilibrium. So in experiment two, we have the same chemicals, the same uh, reactants and products, the same system at the same temperature. And what you'll notice here, though, is we started with more of A and B, and then we came to equilibrium. And you can study uh, this system a little bit more if you want to pause the video and recognize that this much material showed up and this much of D showed up and this much of B went away and this much of A went away. How do I know A and B went away? How do I know its concentration dropped? Because there wasn't any C and D. I know that at the very beginning the reaction had to go forward. Eventually, it came to equilibrium, and the forward and reverse reactions are the same uh, rate, but these were the equilibrium conditions when the system came to equilibrium. And we could look at a graph that describes that as well. Here we started with no C and D. Here we started with the same concentrations of A and B. And the system came to equilibrium after some time here. Experiment three. Now in experiment three, we started, actually we started with more C and D than we had A and B. And uh, we're going to expect 
that this reaction at the very beginning is going to go backwards, uh, we will find a way to predict a really useful idea is to be able to look at concentrations that you're putting into a, a reaction vessel or that you find in nature in some system and decide which direction will this reaction go. That's one of the very useful ideas that we can uh, come out of this with.